We'll now discuss conditional statements. So these are statements of the form if P, then Q, which we denote by P arrow Q. We call P the hypothesis and Q the conclusion. The truth table here may seem a little bit weird, but we'll walk through and explain it. So we have four options, true, 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 false, false, true, false, false. And a conditional statement is only considered false if you lie. So for example, if we had a conditional statement like, if everyone gets an A on the exam, then I will bring cookies. In the first case, everyone gets an A and I bring cookies. So I did not lie to you. The second one, everyone got an A, but I did not bring cookies. That means I lied in my conditional statement. The third one, not everyone got an A, but I still brought cookies. Well, I never lied to you. In the last one, not everyone got an A and I did not bring cookies. Once again, I didn't lie, so it is true. And there are lots of different ways to denote a conditional statement in English, so we'll give a few of those. The first one is the one we discussed before, if P then Q. Some variation on this, if P comma Q or we don't need to state the then part. We also have P is sufficient for Q. Doesn't want to write. Another one, Q if P. A necessary condition. For P is Q. Q, unless not P, we have a few more. P implies Q, P only if Q, a sufficient condition, for Q is P, Q whenever P, Q is necessary for P, and finally, Q follows from P. So there's lots and lots of different ways that we can say this in English. So it's, you have to be careful to really pay attention to the English statement and make sure that you get the right order. You'll notice these last four that I wrote down, P and Q are switched, along with a couple on the previous slide. So you do have to be careful and make sure you are of the right form. So let's do an example. We have P as you study math every day, Q as you get a good grade. So then if I wanted to write P to Q, one of the easiest ways to write that, if you study math every day,
then you get a good grade. And like we just talked about, this is not the only way to do this, to state this. There are several, several different ways to move this to an English statement. Next, we're going to look at a couple of different variations of this. The first is the converse. So the converse of if P then Q is Q then P. So switching the order is the converse. So for example, we can have this statement that says if X is greater than or equal to zero, then the absolute value of X is equal to X. So the converse of that would be if the absolute value of X is equal to X, then X is greater than or equal to zero. Next is the contrapositive. The contrapositive of if P then Q is not Q, then not P. So we both switch the order and we negate everything. So if we have our same proposition we had before, if X is greater than or equal to zero, then the absolute value of X is equal to X. The contrapositive, if the absolute value of X is not equal to X, then X is less than zero since that would be the negation. The last of these is the inverse. And the inverse of if P then Q is not P then not Q. So we're just gonna negate each term. So if we still consider this same one, X is greater than or equal to zero, then the absolute value of x is equal to x. The inverse, if x is less than zero, then the absolute value of x is not equal to x. Next we'll do biconditional. So these are p if and only if Q. And we denote this by this double arrow. So this is the same thing as saying if P then Q and if Q then P. So it goes both ways. If we do our truth table, there are only two cases where this is true, which is if they're both true or if they're both false. The reason why this case here doesn't work for the if P then Q part and this one here wouldn't work for the if Q then P since we would have Q as being true and P as being false. There are a few different ways to say this. We can say P is necessary and sufficient. For Q. Another, if P then Q and conversely, P, if and only if Q, and finally, this one is just an abbreviation where we write P I F F. Q. And we'll do an example. 
If we let P be you can buy a ticket and Q you can board the train, then P if and only if Q would be you buy a ticket if and only if you can board the train. So what this says is that if you buy a ticket, then you can board the train. And also if you're allowed to board the train, then you had bought a ticket. 